and servers are used so often that you might think everybody knows their definitions by heart. However, do they? And do they need to? If you are a software developer or a data scientist, then yes, you most definitely do. Otherwise, having just a vague idea about the entire picture will be sufficient for you to work as a business or financial analyst, for instance. Let's go through a few definitions that will make things clearer. Data means information stored in the form of symbols, ones and zeros, other digits, letters, special characters, etc. Thus, it can be collected, measured, analyzed, and processed further. Where can you find data? Well, we are not talking about physical books with thousands of written pages or the enormous accounting ledgers from the 60s. Data today is stored practically in databases. The latter represent an electronic collection of data or a structure filled with information, if you prefer, organized in a way that is easy to access, manage, and update. And where are databases stored? in database servers. As a matter of fact, server may be a misleading term for a newcomer since its definition can have a specific application in different scenarios. Theoretically, a server is a combination of hardware and software responsible for storing, managing, and processing large amounts of data. The most common types are the web servers, database servers, and FTP servers, free transfer protocol. These facilitate the transfer of web pages, database queries, and files, respectively. All are different servers. Otherwise, an example of a scenario would be the client-server model, where servers exist to respond to the requests made by a client. This model works in the following way. A client requests a service from a server, for instance, to have access to some data. In this example, the server is a piece of software that will provide this service, or this specific amount of data, to the client. Say you are about to request or pull information from a web server through a browser, the latter being the client in this example. You can transmit your request to the server and, in return, obtain a response, also called a reply. Moreover, when we are talking about web servers and browsers, you will obviously need an internet connection. Alternatively, local servers exist as well. Imagine the headquarters of a large company, employing thousands of people. Of course, a lot of information is stored on its servers, and to access the information you need, you would have to use a cabled connection. However, the data won't be stored on an average desktop computer, as its capacity won't be sufficient to handle the processing of the vast amount of information requested by the employees. That's why specialized big machines that have much more powerful hardware designed for storing huge amounts of data are being called servers, too. Another instance is the mail server, which has been created to act as an electronic post office. It is a mixture of hardware and a software application again. The latter follows universally accepted standards for storing and exchanging email messages and other data files such as text, image, or multimedia. It is thanks to mail servers today that we can send and receive letters over the internet with people from all over the world. Nevertheless, don't let the definitions of the word server confuse you. In a way, a server is always a combination of hardware and software and it is related to storing, managing, and processing data. All right, great. We hope notions like data, servers, clients, requests, and responses sound a lot more familiar to you now. Nevertheless, the picture you see here is not quite complete yet. It overlooks fundamental elements that are a must for developers, software engineers, and data scientists. What are they? You'll see in our next video.